If we only had a static set of challenges, we'd all be feeling great. But as everyone here knows, the tumultuous events of the last couple of years in the Middle East and North Africa have added a lot of complications to this picture. In Mali, the terrorists of Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb are attempting to consolidate their safe haven. The return of exiled fighters from the ranks of Gaddafi's army to northern Mali and the subsequent, subsequent Tuareg rebellion dispersed weapons from uh, the Libyan stocks and the coup in Bamako have all brought a dangerous instability to the Sahel. In Libya, the aftermath of the revolution has provided more opportunities for extremist groups to operate, as we saw so tragically in the deaths of Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others in Tripoli on September 11th. I'm sorry, in Benghazi on September 11th. Weakened domestic security institutions and especially civil strife, we know from hard experience, create exactly the kind of environment that terrorists are drawn to. Libya has provided one such case where extremists can cause real problems for states undergoing difficult transitions to democracy. Another example is Syria. There, Al-Qaeda in Iraq seeks to establish a long-term presence under the pseudonym of al-Nusra Front. By fighting alongside armed Syrian opposition groups, al-Nusra members are working to hijack a long repressed nation's struggle to suit their own extremist needs. Last week, we designated al-Nusra Front as an alias of AQI, which is already, of course, listed as a foreign terrorist organization. As they try to wrap themselves in the legitimacy of the opposition, we have called the terrorists out as a warning to all who wish to support the legitimate opposition of the Syrian people and not help a terrorist group put down roots in the Levant. <clears throat> 